What's up guys, Silo Fantasia here, and welcome back to uh, Pong, um, where we are uh, improving our game, the mechanics of the game, so that it, it looks more like uh, the actual Pong, and it's, um, it plays uh, better than, than our previous uh, setups. So, um, in this revision, what we're going to be doing is just focusing on a bunch of small tasks that just kind of overall make the game um, better over time. So um, we need to fix our paddles so that they don't go beyond the window, okay? So in the last video we, we found out found out that they actually can go beyond the, the window because there's no checks. Um, there's no collision checks between the, the paddle and the window, okay? And also we need to put some time in between the ball scoring and the ball serving because if we run the game we can see that if the ball goes be goes beyond the boundaries, it just shows up like in the middle of the screen and keeps on going, and it like it hasn't ever stopped. It just shows up and just keeps going, um, almost like there's a wormhole or something that just ports it from the you know one end of the window to the other, and it just keeps on going. So we want to put some time in between the ball and um, scoring and the ball serving so that the players are ready to um, to uh, engage whenever it's, it comes out at them. Uh, another th little small aesthetics thing really is just to center the objects so that um, they're kind of on base with the screen because they're just kind of on the um, lower edge of the screen right now. Um, also here's the, the paddles going beyond the edge. We want to fix that. Um, so that's probably the first thing that we're going to do um, now. So, in order to fix this, is it's we have to go to the movement code here. So this is player one's movement, and player one is the the paddle on the left. So what we want to do is we want to put some checks here that say, "Don't move down unless the player is within the range of the window." So the way we do that is with a, another if statement here that says, "If player one." If the Y position of the um, paddle is within the boundaries of the of the window, but notice um, this is uh, moving down, so we don't want the the paddle to go below like the ceiling here. So what we're going to want to do is we need to add some more code that says uh, if player one's Y is uh, above while it's above the screen height. Uh, then we want to uh, have it move. Otherwise, if it's not, then the ball is—I mean, the paddle is just going to stop at the edge of the window. So the code for that is going to look like this: if player one y plus player one dot get sprite height is less than screen height, then player one move down. And you could also put this in an and statement and say if key, if the S key is pressed and the player's uh, position is within the window, then move down. But it it, it really doesn't matter uh, as long as as long as this code doesn't get executed unless some conditions are met. So if we go ahead and um, and another thing actually, let me uh, stop the ball from moving because it's kind of annoying for it to be moving while I'm. Um, going over something because it's kind of distracting. So let's turn the ball movement off for a second and then run the game as is. So as you can see the ball just stops moving because it's not being updated. Okay so now if we go all the way down the paddle doesn't go beyond and I've got the key held down right now. It just doesn't go beyond that. So that's what we want. Next thing we want the same thing to happen for the top. So we can go ahead and say and notice that it's the top of the paddle, so we can just use the regular Y value there. So we'll just say if key W is pressed and if player one dot Y is greater than zero, because that's zero is the top edge of the screen, then player one dot uh, move up. Okay, so player one dot move up very good and so now if we build that and run it then uh, the paddle hits the ceiling and it doesn't go beyond that and so 
that's what we want. Now we've got confined motion on both on just this player one's paddle. Now we need to do the same for player two and basically just mirror the code because uh, we want the same conditions to be met. So we go ahead and do that. Player two dot uh, y um, plus player two dot get sprite height um, is less than screen height. Then player two dot move down. And the reason why um, it's player one y plus player one get sprite height is because uh, y plus height is going to be the bottom edge of the uh, paddle so um, it's it's this edge right here that we don't want going beyond the the edge here because if we just said player one y it would let it go let the paddle go all the way down until the top edge reached the edge of the window and then it would stop but that's still too much we want it to stop right here at this the lower edge so that's why we say uh, player one y plus player one gets sprite height and the same thing for player two okay so that's just to clear that up player two dot y is greater than zero then to move up and so if we build that now if we move player two player two doesn't go beyond the boundaries of window which is good same thing for up so good now we've got a uh, both paddles staying within the window so that's one thing fixed so we can check that off now uh, the other big thing that we need to do is play some time in between um, the ball scoring and the ball serving so um, we can turn the ball's movement back on now and just say uh, ball dot update and we'll turn that back on now for for now um, and let's see what else actually let me center this auto because the it's my window the active window is moving around and I don't really want that as much let me center this and leave it as it is okay there we go so we'll go ahead and build that and then we need to add some code that's going to stop the ball when it reaches um, the when it reaches this um, the edge of the window so that when it when it finishes uh, going beyond the window it stops the ball it puts it at the center and then it stops it for a certain time so what we need to do is we need to employ a, a tool called a timer which this isn't the same timer as Allegro timers this is a different type of timer um, but we, what we need to do is place um, something that's going to allow the ball to sit there for a certain amount of time and then when that time is up then it, it lets the ball go so what we need to do is set up um, some some variables uh, that will count for us so a, a counter in, a, in effect so we'll call it the serve um, the serve timer okay and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two arrays um, and what we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a counter and then a, a maximum value that that counter can have so here for example let me explain so um, I'm gonna set this equal to 60 for now and you'll see why okay so we've got a serve timer here with two arrays and then um, they have 60 in each of them okay so what I'm gonna what's gonna happen is that every time the game loop runs it's gonna decrement this value here and when it reaches zero then that's gonna be equivalent to the amount of time that has that has passed since it decremented to zero and then after it goes to zero it's going to reset this timer and then it's going to let the ball go okay um, so let's go ahead and have some code there
uh, actually there's another variable that I need to define and that's called serve ball which I've already uh, written in the code before um, so serve ball is essentially a boolean value that is going to um, start the timer uh, it's gonna start this timer to running okay so let me go ahead and demonstrate what that does okay so if serve ball is true what's going to happen is it's going to decrement the serve timer okay so this is gonna de is gonna decrement this okay and then if the serve timer is zero if it's if the the serve timer if they if it emptied it out completely is going to uh, set the the flag or the trigger to false reset the timer and then it's going to oh well don't worry about this this is um this is actually going to come next but what i want it to do is is going to let the ball go so that it doesn't move so that it starts moving actually um so let me go ahead and show you what that looks like make sure everything looks good serve ball is true if serve ball equals 0 serve ball is false and then and then set the ball moving so ball dot speed x equals let's see what was our original speed that we set the ball at negative two and negative two okay so in essence what's gonna happen is gonna decrement this every time the loop runs and then when it finally hits zero is going to set the speed equal to a non-zero value but what's going to happen here is that remember this check for if the ball was out of bounds we need to put something here that's going to stop the ball so um, besides resetting the ball position what we also want to do is say um, ball dot speed x equals zero and this is going to stop make the ball stop ball speed y equals zero and then we want the same thing to happen on the other side of the screen and then what we're going to want to do is then set our serve timer or our serve, our serve ball flag equal to true so that this code runs okay so that it, the, com the timer starts counting so serve um, ball equal to true okay and basically this code is going uh, every time we set serve ball equal to true it it's gonna start this timer okay and then after the timer is finished then it's gonna set serve ball equal to false so this doesn't execute again and then it's gonna set the ball rolling again okay so let's see what that does let's build that uh oh it says Oh, well that's because yeah. It's not a it's not a, a an allocated object, so we don't use the arrows when it's like that. We use dots. And then yeah, it's everywhere. Okay. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to hit the ball, just dodge it back a couple times. and now watch very closely because I'm gonna let the ball go past and watch what happens see that now that um, the ball is gonna stop for a little bit of time before it keeps going and it serves again and that's what we want we want some time in between that so that's very good now you can fine tweak um, how much time you want in between um, in between serving the ball and scoring um, with this um, so 60 the reason I set it to 60 is because it's 60 beats per second right I set the core clock rate to 60 beats per second so 
60 beats is going to be is equal to one second here. So that's why the ball stopped for, for one second when I did that. If you wanted to set it to two seconds or three seconds, then you would say um, times three or times two, whatever you want. But 60, um, and actually clock, core clock rate is equal to 60. So we'll go ahead and set it core clock. Um, Okay, so if you wanted to set it equal to three seconds or two seconds, let's do that. Let's set it equal to two seconds and just show you that it does work um, in both cases. So let the ball go. See, there you go. That was two seconds. So that's pretty good. I think two seconds is a good value to leave it at, actually. So there you go. That's how we let the ball, um, that's how we make the ball sit still for a little while until. Um, until it's ready to be served again. Okay, so that gets checked off our list. And finally, I think would be a good stopping point would be to make the the, the object centered at the screen, which is it's uh, it's not really necessary. It's really just an OCD thing if you really want to be honest about it. Um, but what we want to do is set the object so that they're actually in the center of the screen. So let's start with the ball. Um, so as I said before, ball x equal to screen width divided by 2 and ball y equal to screen height divided by 2 is not actually the center of the screen. So what we want to do is we need to subtract off um, another half of that because actually if I pause the ball and show you that it's not actually at the center. Okay, so I'm going to sit our window right in the middle of the viewing area so you can see. Now you can see that this clearly the center of these paddles is not in the center of the window. So what we need to do is subtract off another half of the object's width and height. And it's the same thing with this ball here. So what we have to do is say is take the screen, the width of the sprite or the height of the sprite and then divide that by 2 and subtract that off. So it's going to be actually, um, let's start with the paddle so that it looks, so you can actually see the difference. Um, and it's going to be screen height divided by 2 minus uh, player 1 dot get sprite height and then that's going to be divided by 2. Okay, so in other words you can see now, if we run this, see now, no, now it's easy to see. Now the paddle is actually, the center of the paddle is actually in the center of the screen. So um, we need to do the same thing. You know, see how, see the difference between this paddle and that paddle. This one's in the center, this one's not in the center. So now let's do that for the other, the others. Okay, good. So now that's going to be in the center. And then finally the ball, which we do the same exact concept. Ball that I get. Sprite high, uh, width, actually, because it's x in the x direction. And then minus ball I get sprite height. Okay, so now you can see that both the ball and both of the paddles are in the dead center. The dead center of the object is in the center of the screen now. Well, to the you know nearest pixel. I mean, what if the width of this object was like an odd number? You can't divide that. You know, it would be like half a pixel, and you can't have half of a pixel. So it just rounded it up. So that's, we're, we're good now. So now if we run the whole thing and let the ball kind of do its thing, which is go, um, we'll see that we have a reasonably um, 
polished or semi-polished game not quite yet not quite there yet but now we'll see oops actually there was something else here serve ball true Oh yes, that's right. I needed to set the initial speed of the ball equal to zero because uh, the timer is going to be effective because we initialize the serve ball flag to true so that the timer is going the rest timer is going to start with it rested. So I'm going to show you what that looks like here. See? And then when you let it go, it does the same thing. So there we go. We're getting there. We're getting to be a finished finished game. Still got some other things left to do though, like um well, add a score counter. And then um as you can see here, the ball only goes at like 45 degree angles, and that's not really the way Pong is meant to be played because that's kind of boring. So, um we want the paddle to be able to give the ball some English or spin and get different angles so that's what we're gonna work on in the next video so uh, thanks guys for watching don't forget to comment if you have any questions at all please uh, comment in uh, in the comment section um, if you can't get your code running or if you want this code um, I'm gonna be putting the code up eventually but if you have any questions just comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can um, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.